The picturesque village of Norfolk nestles along U.S. Route 44 in the foothills of the Berkshire Mountains, five miles south of Massachusetts and 20 miles east of New York State. This area is part of the Litchfield Hills of Connecticut. At 1,230 feet, Norfolk has the highest elevation for any post office in Connecticut. Norfolk is affectionately called the Icebox of Connecticut because of its severe winters and cool summer days. Cross-country skiing, ice fishing, and the Norfolk Curling Club provide winter highlights. In the summer, some people call Norfolk the Music Box of Connecticut because, in addition to Infinity Hall, named Best Music Hall in New England, Norfolk plays host to the Yale Chamber Music Festival each year in July and August. Concerts and recitals are presented in the historic Music Shed. The town of Norfolk was founded in 1758. The Norfolk Historic District, listed in the National Register of Historic Places, includes the Village Center, with several historic buildings surrounding the village green. At the south end of the green stands an 1889 fountain designed by Stanford White with metal sculpture by Augustus St. Gaudens. On the east side of the green stands the Norfolk Historical Society and Museum, formerly an academy building built in 1840. At the north end of the green, along U.S. Route 44, stands the russet stone and terracotta tiled roof of the Norfolk Library, founded by Isabella Eldridge. Adjacent to the library is the former Pettibone Tavern. Across from the tavern, at the northwest corner of the green, stands White House, a mansion built in 1801 by Joseph Battelle, one of Norfolk's most prominent figures. White House was expanded multiple times by succeeding generations of the Battelle family. A large white frame meeting house built in 1813 stands just south of White House and holds worship services for the Church of Christ. Across from the fountain at the southwest corner of the green stands Battelle House, the former homestead of the noted Reverend Joseph Eldridge, third minister of the Church of Christ. Today the building serves as studio, student dining room, and box office for the Yale Chamber Music Festival. Standing between Battelle House and the meeting house is a beautiful gray stone building known as Battelle Chapel. Hello, my name is Nels White, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to a virtual tour of Battelle Chapel, showing you some of its beautiful stained glass windows. I'm a member of the Church of Christ here in Norfolk, and it's been my pleasure over the years to help share our historic chapel with many groups of tours and many individual visitors. Each visitor from the tour gets a brochure when they come to visit, describes the history of the chapel and, of course, its magnificent stained glass. We hope that someday you'll be able to come to Norfolk and see our stained glass in person. Many visitors would like a remembrance of their experience, so we offer a few items for sale. We have some beautiful note cards that describe the windows, the Tiffany windows. There's a box of 12. For something smaller, we have a postcard which features all five windows. And for those really interested in the history, uh, we have a couple of books, one about the history of Norfolk and the other about the history of the church. Both prominently feature Battelle Chapel and the stained glass windows. All proceeds go toward maintenance and restoration of the stained glass. Since its dedication in 1888, Battelle Chapel has served as a venue for many kinds of church and community events and activities. Throughout the year, people come for exercise classes, concerts, receptions, community markets, and occasionally for a worship service. The 1813 White Meeting House next door serves as the usual place of worship for the Church of Christ, a congregational church affiliated with the United Church of Christ. In 1887, Urania Battelle Humphrey, shown in this 1872 photo, engaged the well-known architect J. Cleveland Cady to build a stone chapel as a gift to the church and community in memory of her parents, Joseph and Sarah Battelle. She had grown up in Norfolk, but later moved to Brooklyn, New York, where she was now the widow of former Congressman James Humphrey. Urania's father, Joseph Battelle, shown in this 1839 portrait, came to Norfolk in 1792 at age 18 to open a small store. He soon proved to be a shrewd businessman, moving the store next to the Hartford Albany stage stop at the Pettibone Tavern. In 1801, he was successful enough to build himself a new house across the road from the tavern and store. It was one of the biggest houses in town and was painted white, thusly named White House. It was located just north of the original 1761 meeting house of the Church of Christ, where Joseph was a faithful member. In 1805, Joseph married Sarah Robbins, 
shown in this 1846 photo, daughter of Reverend Emmy Robbins, the original minister of the Church of Christ and its longest serving minister, 52 years from 1761 until his death in 1813. Joseph and Sarah raised nine children as Joseph continued to achieve commercial success in many ventures, supplying farm products to stores in Connecticut and New York's Hudson River Valley, hauling freight around the area, operating a toll road through Norfolk, and managing real estate investments in New York, Ohio, and Indiana. Joseph died in 1841 and Sarah in 1854. Construction of Battelle Chapel began in 1887, using mostly local materials and employing both local and out-of-town craftsmen. Granite was quarried in North Norfolk. White oak was used for the beautiful interior support posts and woodwork. Katie's Romanesque revival design for the building was unusual in that the stage and pulpit were located at the back on the west wall, and the apse area at the other end was used as a parlor anteroom as people entered the, through the bell tower. Large pocket doors opened from the parlor into the spacious meeting area of the chapel. David Maitland Armstrong was chosen to supply the stained glass for the chapel. Armstrong, along with John Lafarge and Louis Tiffany, were pioneers in the new medium of opalescent stained glass. Armstrong had been a co-worker with Tiffany before founding a competing company. The chapel side windows show some of the attractive colors and textures in opalescent glass design for which Armstrong had become well known. Armstrong also supplied stained glass with similar designs for Norfolk's Isabella Eldridge Library, constructed in 1888. Tragedy struck in the fall of 1887 as Urania Battelle Humphrey fell ill and passed away. Her family, both siblings and children, were determined to see the project completed. Urania's son-in-law, Dr. Charles U. Shepard, had Armstrong create special stained glass windows at the west end of the chapel above the stage to honor Urania Battelle Humphrey. The chapel was dedicated in December of 1888. The three magnificent windows above the pulpit area reflect the triune statement on the Battelle's memorial plaque. Pinks and purples are prominent in the complex abstract design of the window. The beautiful colors, texture, and luminosity of each figure are achieved entirely through the use of different types of opalescent glass, rather than through an artist's painting or the use of solid color glass as seen in earlier religious stained glass. The only painting seen in these windows is the lettering in the bottom sections. It was only after Urania's death that the family was able to give her credit for her wonderful gift by adding her name to the side panels. Please note the scripture shown at the bottom of the center panel. We will hear of it again later in the tour. Note the various opalescent techniques such as ripple and streak texture, as well as the brilliant colors blended into the glass. Note the sky or cloud effects in some sections, known as Kokomo patterns. A distinctive feature of our chapel Armstrong windows is the extensive use of gem pieces, where the round parts of most figures, including the side windows, are actually spherical rather than flat pieces of glass. Some of these are smooth spheres, while others are rough or faceted, and diameters range from less than one inch up to several inches. These pieces transmit light differently than the surrounding flat surfaces and provide amazing contrast. Sunlight streaming through the various glass textures dazzles the viewer with glittering patterns that change as you walk across the room. In 2016, an effort was launched to repair and restore all stained glass in Battelle Chapel. The Armstrong windows had been repaired over the years, but the 128-year-old lead had become so weak that full restoration was required. The Tiffany windows, which we will see shortly, are 40 years younger and in better condition, needing only minor repairs and cleaning. Restoration of each Armstrong window is a major undertaking. Beginning with the center pulpit window, the sections of outer protective covering weathered Lexan were removed. Each section of the window stained glass, there were six sections for the center pulpit window, for example, was carefully removed and all were transported to the Glass Source Studio in Shelton and later Seymour, Connecticut. The open window frame was temporarily covered with plywood. At the studio, the restoration expert, Michael Skirtick, and his assistants photographed and made rubbings of each section. Each individual piece of glass was numbered as it was removed from the old lead. There were over 1,000 pieces of glass in the six sections of the center pulpit window. Each piece was cleaned, repaired if necessary, or replaced if repair were impossible. Few pieces were repaired and very few were replaced. The pieces were then reassembled and glued into their original patterns 
with brand new lead holding them in place. Each section was then sealed against weather conditions. After a long wait for the Norfolk winter to end, the restored center window sections were brought back to the chapel and reinstalled in the window frame. New outer protective covers of tempered glass were installed. The cleaning of all the stained glass and the replacement of the weathered outer covering produced a remarkable improvement in color and brilliance when the afternoon sunlight shows through the restored window. As of summer 2020, the project has raised $222,550 toward a total goal of $300,000 in restoring five of the seven Armstrong windows and repairing and cleaning five Tiffany windows in the Tiffany roof. Fundraising has now been put on hold until the church's steeple repair project is completed. Several Battelle family descendants were noteworthy in the history of Norfolk and of Battelle Chapel in the years following 1888 and leading up to the addition of the Tiffany stained glass. Joseph Battelle Jr. became a benefactor of his alma mater donating $200,000 in 1874 for construction of the original Battelle Chapel on the Yale campus in New Haven. The Stanford White Fountain at the south end of Norfolk's Village Green was given as a memorial to Joseph Battelle Jr. by his niece, Mary Eldridge. Most of Joseph and Sarah's children moved away from Norfolk. But son Robbins Battelle made White House his home as he managed the Battelle businesses. Robin's sister Irene married Professor William Larned of Yale and moved to New Haven. Irene was quite gifted in music and used Battelle family funds to establish the Department of Music at Yale. Her influence led to the naming of noted organist Gustav Steckel as the first Battelle professor of music at Yale. The Steckel family became good friends with the Battelles in Norfolk, and their son Carl eventually became secretary to Robin's Battelle. Hello, I am Marie Sifko, and I am also a member of the Church of Christ here in Norfolk. And I'm going to take you from the era of the Armstrong stained glass windows to the era of the Tiffany stained glass windows here in Battelle Chapel. For 40 years after the dedication of the chapel in 1888, the bell tower entry opened into a room called the parlor. The parlor was separated from the larger chapel meeting area by large pocket doors and had five plate glass windows in a semicircular wall facing the village green. It also had a fireplace. In 1928, a change came to Battelle Chapel that would make it a leading attraction for future generations of tourists in Norfolk. The parlor became known as the Tiffany Room due to the benevolence of a granddaughter of Joseph and Sarah Battelle. Ellen Battelle's mother died shortly after Ellen's birth, and she was raised in White House by Father Robbins Battelle and Aunt Anna, who never married. Ellen married Frederick P. Terry at age 22, but became a widow within a year. She raised son Frederick in White House, but tragedy struck again in 1890 as her son died at age 16. In 1895, Ellen suffered yet another loss with the death of her father, Robbins. However, before 1895 came to a close, Ellen started a new chapter in her life when she married Carl Steckel. Ellen was able to find happiness with Carl as they contributed much to the community, including construction of the tower on Haystack Mountain and of the Music Shed, as well as founding the Litchfield County Choral Society and staging concerts with many famous musicians of the time. In 1925, Ellen suffered a final loss as husband Carl died. In 1927, Ellen consulted with Louis Comfort Tiffany of New York to design a gift for the church and community. Tiffany had become a friend of the family while spending time with the Battelle Steckel family in Norfolk. Tiffany Studios was commissioned for a total cost of $10,000 to replace all the glass in the Battelle Chapel parlor with Tiffany stained glass. This included the pocket doors, the double door entrance from the bell tower, and the five windows facing the village green. The new windows were designed to show landscape images reminiscent of the Norfolk Hills, which would convey solace and a sense of inspiration in the cycle of the seasons. These five windows have become famous as the Tiffany windows of Battelle Chapel in Norfolk. The first window is Promise. It portrays earliest spring. Tender green shoots of grass appear upon the hillsides where two brilliant birds, 
a robin and a bluebird carol their delight. Beyond in the distance, a haze covers the hills and softens the tones of the sky. The time of the singing of birds is come. Song of Solomon 2.12 Note the copper foil plus solder instead of lead is used to outline and hold the pieces of opalescent glass in place. This was a later development used by Tiffany to incorporate smaller and more delicate figures. Perspective of the distant hills is achieved by using multiple layers of glass with a Kokomo sky pattern placed on top. Note that the colors of the robin are also achieved with a raised layer of glass. See the model pattern of the darker spots on the hillside, one of the many textures achieved by skillful processing of the molten glass. The second window is realization. It depicts summer and the foreground is thick with clumps of roses, lilies, and violets across whose bright heads one looks upon a green rolling landscape. Tall, luxuriously leaved trees rise at the right and left to frame a background of blue hills and sky. The flowers, rich foliage, and ripening hillsides suggest the fullness of summer's bounty. The flowers appear upon the earth. Song of Solomon 2.12 Note the streaking pattern in the beautiful blue flowing stream. In addition to the models and the finely detailed small opalescent flower petals, see the background texture created by the confetti technique, achieved by shattering blown glass fragments into a molten layer. Also note the larger white raised lily petals. These are achieved using the drapery technique where a hot poker is pulled through the thickening molten glass in order to achieve textured folds. We skip over the center window for now. The fourth window is fulfillment. It portrays autumn as a blazing glory of color. In the foreground is a mass of blue aster above which a green slope is crowned by an arching tree with brilliant foliage. A flaming red maple is visible below, against hills which pile, range upon range, seemingly without end in suggestion of the breadth of the harvest earth. The bright tones of the foliage vie with the purple and blue of the distance and water and sky. The promise of spring has been fulfilled. The harvest is past, the summer is ended. Jeremiah 8.20 Note the slightly darker sky created by another Kokomo pattern, as well as the ripple pattern in the goldenrod petals. The fifth window is rest. The earth has taken upon herself the winter semblance of sleep. In the foreground is a frozen stream, its irregular banks drifted deep with snow. At the right, straight dark pines have snow-laden branches. In the background, a forest of pointed firs rises against rugged snow-capped mountains. A winter bird, the chickadee, sings to be singing of the coming of spring, anticipating renewal of the cycle of life. He giveth his beloved sleep. Psalm 127, 2. Note the even darker Kokomo sky pattern and the confetti texture in the distant hills. The overall blue tints, in contrast with the glistening white snow and ice, makes one feel the cold of winter in the ice box. This window includes a signature in the lower right corner, Louis C. Tiffany, New York. The center window is the sun of righteousness, which shines through all seasons. We see a glorious sunrise among the tall pines and a babbling mountain stream. Note the opalescent colors blended into the flowing stream. Also note that hand painting technique was required in the top center section to achieve the sunrise effect on the tall pines. This was the only Tiffany window which was taken out to the studio for repair. It had a large crack in the top section sky and had to have that piece of Kokomo glass replaced. During the repair process, it was discovered that the sunrise effect had been achieved through the use of three separate layers of glass. The outermost layer had yellow-brown stained shapes corresponding to the trees with golden sun rays behind. The next layer had blue stained shapes corresponding to the trees. With the placement of these two layers together, we see the green of the trees with the sun shining behind it. The third layer of glass completes the center of the scene. It is replacement glass made with the Kokomo sky pattern.
The windows seen connecting the later Tiffany window with the original Armstrong window at the opposite end of the building. It brings to life the scripture written in the bottom section of the center Armstrong pulpit window. Unto them that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Malachi 4, 2. May you, as have so many others through the years, feel peace, consolation, inspiration, and healing from viewing these beautiful windows. Thank you for joining us on this virtual tour. We hope you've been inspired by the history and the beauty of the stained glass artwork here in Battelle Chapel. Please contact the Church of Christ to arrange for a guided tour or for an individual visit. Donations are gratefully accepted and will be applied directly toward maintenance and restoration of the stained glass windows. Thank you very much.